This is the 2023 Toyota Corolla GR Morizo Edition, named after the Toyota president, Akio Toyota, who uses Morizo as his racing name. So this Morizo Edition is the ultimate GR Corolla, thanks to some exclusive specs. A close ratio transmission, shorter differential gears, forged wheels, stiffened chassis, front brake ducts, monotube shock absorbers, ultra suede trimmed seating, and of course, no back seats. And today, I'm gonna to review it and see if I can stop grinning.
This is right next to the controller right here, which controls the torque split between the front and the rear wheels. So if you turn it to the right, you get front, you'll see it says 60-40 split. Twist it to the right and you get 30-70, 30, 30 on the front, 70 on the rear. But there is one more setting. On top of the button, it says push track. So if we push this, it displays GR4 track. That gives you a 50-50 torque split and is supposedly the ideal setting for this car, according to Toyota. Second most important button right here is drive mode. On the screen, you get custom, sport, normal, and eco. If you go back up to custom, on the main screen, hit settings. You can set your powertrain to sport and your steering to sport. Again, there are fixed rate dampers on this car, so you can't change how the suspension feels. So more good news, you get physical uh, HVAC controls. Up front, there is a Wi-Fi charger. So behind your torque split button, you get two decent sized cup holders, but don't put a massive cup in there because then you won't be able to change gear. Back ahead of the driver, you can play around with the controls. I've got my uh, turbo boost gauge on the left. Uh, obviously center, you get your tachometer and speedo, and then this gray box right here will show what gear you're in, which is kind of handy if you maybe accidentally move from uh, fourth to sixth instead of fourth to fifth or whatever, um, you can see which gear you're in. And on the right hand side, bit of a gimmick, it's an accelerometer, brakeometer, shows you how much acceleration braking that the car is using. Everything else is, is pure Corolla. One thing to note, the pedals are quite widely spaced. So I, I don't have a big foot, but to do healing and towing, would be a little bit tricky with this car. This button right here, IMT, Intelligent Manual Transmission. It's a fancy way to say rev matching. I suggest if you get one of these cars, you just simply push that button. It does reset every time you stop the car, but a simple reset, push it every time you start the car and you'll be extremely happy. And you won't need to, uh, to do a difficult heel and toe, which is almost impossible on this car. The overall fit and finish is pretty good. It's got some nice soft plastics. Again, it is a little bit low rent, but what you're paying for is A, the uniqueness, particularly in this Modizo edition, and B, the amazing powertrain, amazing suspension, drive modes, you name it. This car is fantastic. One thing I forgot to mention are these Go Faster red seat belts. And with that in mind, let's go drive this. Clutch take up is pretty good. I think I have the seat in the perfect position for me. Gear change is a little notchy, but it's it's pretty precise. And immediately, it's a lot of fun. Easy to get up to pretty fast speeds. A little jiggly, the suspension's a bit jiggly, but it's not bad. These aren't perfect roads though, so maybe on a smoother road. Likes to rev too. Tiny little three cylinder, but it does like to rev. Just get these tires a little warmer. Into third gear. A lot of grip on these things. Last car I drove actually, which was really impressed me, was the um, Ford Focus RS, and that had uh, Pilot Cup 2s on it. And I was very impressed with that car. I mean, those tires stuck like glue, and that was several years ago. And don't be looking for any sort of amenities like heated and cold seats. These Alcatara seats are hot. It's 82 degrees outside today. Right. Had to double D clutch there. Almost missed the change. Third gear, power down. Oh! Yeah. He 
got to hang on because this thing has acres of grip. Got a really uh, little steering is pinpoint accurate, so much so you have to make minor adjustments mid bend to make sure that it's pointing in the right direction. Yeah, I can tell this car is going to be a grin fest. So much grip. Power out. The thing is about this car, it's small, it's compact. You don't really need to go to excessive speeds to, to feel like it's going quick. Scything through these corners. Quick left. It likes to rev so much that I'm banging up against the rev limiter here and the whole dash flashes orange like warning, warning you're having too much fun. Hard on the brakes, brakes are good too. There isn't an initial bite but they're very progressive once you stomp on it. So on these kind of back rows I wouldn't imagine I'm going to need sixth gear at all. In fact, I, I put it in fifth to go down that hill, but we're back down to fourth gear. Third and fourth is probably going to be the two gears that you're going to spend the most time in. And it likes these twisty turns. It really does. A little bit of a dip here. You do get bounced around somewhat, so if you've got a headache, don't don't go for a drive. Oh, 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 oh. So good, very very chuckable. This thing, absolutely amazing. You can feel it rotating. And these Cup Twos, what a tire! And they're they're run flats. I mean, they don't want to put a big old heavy spare tire in this car. The accelerometer, brakeometer thing is, is kind of useful, but you don't get a whole lot of opportunity to actually look at it, especially going as fast as I'm going. So there's a bit of a straight here. Change up when it goes orange. There are cars with, with, with better suspension control but because they put fixed rate dampers on this thing, you know, you don't get that luxury. So we would have made the decision that this is how you're going to have it, and there are no choices. And it is a little bit bumpy. So what's the change like? Pretty good. Um, took me uh, a hot minute to get used to the clutch. You know, they're all different. I tried moving the seat back a little and I felt I was a little bit too far away. You know, in a manual car, you really want to be like a little bit closer to the wheel so you can pull the shifter. And I don't have particularly long arms or long legs to be able to do that. So I think I've got pretty much the ideal position here. So in a little bit of slower traffic, how are these seats? Not bad, but not the best. Um, they could use a little bit more lumbar support, but uh, they're definitely grippy and they definitely hold you in and the ball string is, is, is adequate for this, uh, this little car. And then I'm in fifth doing 52 miles an hour. It doesn't really start pulling well until about 3,500 RPM. This is a car that you need to rev and it likes to rev. It's not like a um, two liter from VW uh, in the GTI, which, um, that's not a car that likes to go to its red line. It's built for tons of torque from very low down. And this one isn't the same as that. It is so easy to drive quickly. Gear change is pretty good. Feels notchy like the Toyota Supra was. Maybe missed one or two gears in that car in my haste. It is not anywhere close to being as good as a Type R Civic. Long sweeping left-hander 
and it is just going around like it is glued to the road. Amazing, no body roll, just incredible. And with this all-wheel drive system, you can go in decently quick, no slow, fast out for me. Oh, the steering is just amazing. Lime. This is a really tight, I gotta use my foot brace here. Tight right hander. Oh, squeezing the organs in. Too close to the rev limiter. Don't need to down change there, but I'm getting used to this uh, transmission now. Clutch, gearbox, combo. Let's do a quick turn around. It doesn't have the out and out power of, of say, the, uh, the Golf R. They may be very similar from sort of zero to 60, particularly with the Golf R with the manual transmission. But that Golf R with the, the twin clutch, the DSG, is gonna, find it easier to pass slower traffic. It's just a little bit more tractable. The engine has got a lot of torque. And it kicks in lower down when you need it. But that doesn't take anything away from this car because it is an absolute hoot to drive. 